Hello and welcome everyone to the latest installment of the Porton webinar series. My name is Colin Parker and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar, Holiday SEO or What to Do During a Code Freeze, with Zach Heinrichs who, Heinrichs, who is an SEO ninja here at Porton. Sorry Zach, I'll get that better next time. So uh, just wanted to get, set this up a little bit for you guys. Uh, we've got a pretty broad audience today. We're going to do a little bit of uh, what is code freeze, but uh, definitely don't run away. Uh, we'll get past that pretty quickly, but wanted to make sure that we covered that uh, as to set this up. Uh, and just so you all know, uh, in case you miss out on any of today's webinar or you want to review it later, don't worry. We'll send out a follow-up email which will contain a link to uh, the recording, a slide share link, uh, as well as all of the links that Zach will be referencing in this session. Uh, if you guys have any questions, there are a couple of ways you can bring those up and we hope you definitely will. Uh, the favorite is always by asking the questions within the questions pane of GoToWebinar. And the other is by tweeting your, quest your questions using the hashtag PortantU. Uh, so that's just hash PortantU. All right, so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Zach. Hey, Zach. Hey, Colin. Thank you. Uh, thank you for welcoming me into your desktops, monitors, uh, and all that stuff. Um, and so today, yeah, we're going to be talking about holiday SEO or uh, what to do for SEO during a code freeze. Uh, but first, just a little bit about myself, uh, who I am, why I'm here. Uh, I am, most importantly, uh, a husband almost 10 years now, um, a father and soccer coach of two amazing little monsters you can see here. Uh, currently working on building up my holiday spirit, but that doesn't usually start until December 1st after my first peppermint mocha of the year. Um, but, and also people tell me that I am quite tall. Interesting facts. Uh, why am I here? Uh, well, I am one of the SEO strategists here at Portent. I've been here for nearly a year. I have uh, seven years of SEO ex experience working on a wide variety of clients from enterprise to mom and pa shops. Uh, I enjoy finding ways to connect people to all the right companies, the right websites, so they can find what they're looking for. Uh, and actually, I was recently trying to find information about, you know, on code freezes and, and what kind of limitations they would have for SEO. Uh, and I couldn't really find all of what I was looking for in one place. So here we are. Uh, first, a disclaimer, uh, I am an SEO. I am not a developer nor a programmer. Um, this will be more towards the, uh, the SEO spectrum of code freeze. Um, so this is not intended to be a, a 101 level webinar on what code freeze is. I know a lot of you out there have a ton of experience working through code freezes, um, but I am contractually obligated to set this up so that it makes sense to anyone in the crowd that's never worked at a, a larger agency or a larger company um, that makes most of their money around the holidays where code freeze is an absolute certainty uh, every year. Uh, so in general, a freeze is, uh, there are no two code freezes are alike. Uh, there are certain freezes for applications and products where, you know, the, a project will move forward towards a release state. Uh, it's where everything halts, stops, uh, no more work to be done. Um, and the severity of the freeze can depend a lot on different factors, but for the most part, nothing in the code changes. Uh, then there is a code freeze that usually starts around two months before the holiday shopping season, which is where we are right now, right in smack dab in the middle of it. Uh, and in most cases, a code freeze is more of an air quote code freeze. Um, it becomes more akin to just uh, an infrastructure and back end code freeze, uh, more of a guideline as opposed to uh, a steadfast law of the land. Uh, for example, I assume many of you are going to be producing and releasing holiday-related seasonal content to either entertain, educate, otherwise add value for your audience. Um, and if not, you may be running out of time for that. Uh, and based on that assumption, I think it may be safe to say that you are allowed to specify any of the metadata and on-page information for any of those new, uh, new products, new content pieces. And now this may be the eggnog talking. It is almost noon here on the West Coast, but you could probably also make these seemingly superficial, actually super impactful uh, changes to other parts of your site as well. Um, so that we can get your new content, your old content, all of your products 
to show up where people are and where they're looking for and give them a reason to spend money, their holiday money, with you this year. So what can you do if you can't change uh, the back end of the, of the site? You could throw your hands up and start your vacation early. Woo! Nope, sorry. Not yet, anyway. Uh, but So now that you've come to that understanding with your IT and dev teams on what can't be changed during your particular code freeze, uh, and maybe you've admitted to yourself, if no one else, that your site could stand to be improved a little bit here and there before the new year. Uh, we're, gonna go, we're going to look at a few different approaches to some things that you can do um, with the added benefit of not having to worry about the site going through any major changes right under your nose. And this is also going to be a great opportunity to catch up or fill in any gaps um, that have maybe fallen by the wayside throughout the year. We all have incredibly busy schedules. Um, so this is a great time to cement your strategy for the coming year. Uh, I realize that if you're working for a company with a site that is big enough to have a holiday code freeze, uh, chances are that you're already well into planning for 2016. But with that being said, I'm going to argue for the value here of things like uh, a technical SEO audit for your site, maybe a little bit of keyword research and some on-page uh, refresh and optimization. Uh, and then a, subse a subsequent refresh of uh, perhaps your content strategy uh, could be a part of the plan. First, technical audit. It is a great time to take a step back from any of the daily grind uh, tasks you have to do in and out every day uh, and evaluate your site as a whole. Uh, approach it kind of with a, with a fresh eye um, and like it's a new client perhaps. Uh, see if you can uncover any major uh, issues because just because there is a code freeze doesn't mean that you can't address those major errors if you find them. Um, after all, what good is your stable code frozen site if people can't find it? So the technical SEO audit uh, will help to identify uh, any potential issues that are affecting a search engine's ability to crawl, score, and index all of your critical site content, uh, which would in turn then prevent actual humans from finding clicking, and purchasing any of your goods or services. And during the SEO audit, one major area of focus for me um, is whether or not your site is actually being crawled and indexed properly. Uh, we want the entirety of the site to be included in any potential uh, search results pages. Think of website inclusion as being on the nice list. Uh, if you're not on it, you're not going to get a present. You're not going to be able to rank. Uh, we all want our sites to be on the nice list or hopefully on page one of those search results. You can be like Joe there. Uh, a quick check into uh, what into the search engine's index of, of what they have for you uh, in their indexes um, will help determine approximately how many pages you have uh, that are in there so you can do the, the site uh, colon your site and see how many pages Google thinks you have, uh, how many Bing thinks you have, because uh, we want to have as many of our valuable content and product pages crawled and indexed as possible. If you're not indexed, you cannot be served up uh, in the search engine result pages. Uh, this is a, just a quick, easy way to understand if there are any major crawl problems. Uh, you can also pop into Search Console or Bing Webmaster Tools to find potential crawl errors uh, with, the, with the site, track down some 404s uh, or any other 400 server errors. Um, and then making sure that your robots TXT is working as intended, um, not having accidentally left in your disallow all after your latest site relaunch. Now you can also take a look at your XML sitemaps to make sure they're doing their job, trying to get the, the greatest percentage of uh, URLs indexed to submitted as possible. Uh, and important, we're actually lucky enough to have our own crawler that simulates uh, search engine crawls that help us track down uh, any potential issues there. So on to XML sitemaps. Uh, in addition to URLs discovered naturally through links, uh, the XML sitemap uh, allows webmasters to, uh, allows them the ability to submit a list of URLs that you want to make sure that search engines are crawling. 
Uh, URLs included in the sitemap always must return that 200 OK response uh, just to make sure we're communicating trust on every possible level. Uh, and for larger sites, and, and this is something that's becoming more and more prevalent, uh, you can develop a, a sitemap index containing multiple XML sitemaps. This might be a great time uh, to finally you know, break down by category uh, and, and build out those individual XML sitemaps based on segments of your site. Um, in the future, this helps diagnose any major issues. So if you can tell that you know, perhaps all of your, uh, your blog posts aren't being indexed for some reason, or maybe just a, a portion of those, uh, you, can, you can track it down that way. Uh, you can break it down into uh, a separate sitemap for videos, uh, products broken, by, broken down by categories, uh, blogs, blog archives, um, all for basically for anything you want to do. And these, I know these may seem pretty straightforward, um, but and basic best practices at this point. But if you have the time now to check on them, you should, uh, because ultimately, you have to care whether or not search engines can find, crawl, and index your site, um, as it's our lifeline and really the only way to get into those SERPs. Um, this is the way that content, products, and services uh, get shared with the world. And your, your website is your gift to the world. Pardon all of the holiday-related puns. Um, this is your content, your products, your services, all of that valuable stuff that uh, teams have worked so hard to get up um, and uh, get out there to the world. This is, how, this is how we will make your site's content, including all that shiny new holiday content, findable by the people who want to give you money for your products and services. I also want to make sure that once, our, once your site is found, uh, that it's actually relevant to search engines. So quickly, um, this is a little SEO 101-ish here. Uh, we're going to talk about some, uh, some on-page tactics uh, that will help make sure that you have everything uh, locked down tight. Uh, so I'm not going to go too deep into the SERP best practices here, but I just wanted to emphasize a few key points that you can tackle right now. Uh, you can take the time to revisit the most important pages, categories, products on your site. Be sure that these uh, high value pages are tightened up uh, as best they can, as best you can uh, during the busy part of the year. Um, and if it's not you, check with whomever owns your, your CMS, see if they can edit any of those on page elements. Uh, my guess is they can. Um, and if so, don't be afraid to tweak them. Um, do some testing with, uh, with holiday language in the title tags if you need to. Um, and if you're using a, a WordPress site and you have a plugin like Yoast, you are most definitely able to edit any of the SEO elements on the page. Um, and using any uh, refined or refreshed uh, recent uh, keyword strategy will be most helpful. So quickly, let's just say your site sells candy canes, and not just any candy canes. They are the best peppermint candy canes in all of the whole world. All of your reviews say so. You obviously want to make sure that your title has targeted keyword phrases in it because aside from the overall page content, uh, the title tag is that most important HTML uh, element of your site. Um, all search engines consider the keywords in this tag and give priority in their algorithms. Uh, and keep pixel length in mind, not just character length. Uh, one, of the, one good tool for, for checking on pixel length uh, is uh, the Screaming Frog. Um, they, they pull out every each title of your of your site, and they give you the title length, pixel width, uh, making sure that we don't uh, that you're not truncated in in results. Uh, and I have a little present for you. Uh, this is Portent's uh, SERP preview tool. Uh, I actually end up using this a lot um, when I'm you know demonstrating for for clients or, or anything like that. Um, but it helps to test your title tags against the uh, the truncation limit of 512 pixels. So keep pixel length in mind when you're redoing those. Uh, refine and refresh any headings based on that keyword strategy. Um, and again, you know, working in any kind of holiday themes if you need to. Uh, always take advantage of the, the image alt attribute. And meta descriptions. Um, always be sure, and, and this can be updated um, a lot easier for the holidays uh, since it's more of an ad copy. Uh, you want to get out uh, any kind of holiday messaging, um, whether or not you've got free shipping or, or limited time offers or, or things like that. 
Uh, and don't forget about structured data makeup, uh, markup. Sorry. Um, this has been around for a while. Uh, these are HTML tags that webmasters can use to mark up your page to better communicate to search engines uh, what content is displayed. Um, this is not a uh, not not a, a signal for any of the ranking algorithms. Um, however, enhancing your content, whether it's on your home page or on individual product pages, um, enhancing that content uh, will definitely improve your chances of being clicked uh, clicked through on. Um, just a, a few things you can do is the company logo. Um, I, Linking your social profiles um, is, is a great way uh, to get more, uh, more organic traffic, more earned clicks out there. Um, and always make sure that the markup is implemented properly. Um, if you're using the, the JSON LD uh, or compared to the, the microdata makeup markup, um, making sure that all the information is clearly visible on the page. Uh, no one wants to be accused of, of hiding content in there from Google. Uh, because just like Santa, Google knows when you've been bad or good. Uh, another thing that you can tackle during a uh, code freeze is um, making sure that you have uh, your social media markup down pat. Um, social media markup such as Facebook's Open Graph and, and Twitter's uh, the Twitter card. Uh, you can optimize what copy and images are used as thumbnails. Um, what's used for uh, the main image. Uh, you can have multiple images in there if you want to give people the choice. Um, this is a great opportunity to, to have some of that more uh, holiday themed uh, imagery and messaging going out. Uh, you can pick and choose what goes as a title and as a description for when people are sharing um, all of your amazing holiday content. And if this is in fact a code freeze around holiday time, uh, now would be a great time to get that holiday, seasonal, timely content out there. Uh, working with your content team to develop some seasonal blog posts, uh, some gift giving guides, history of the holiday, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, if you have that in, in the arsenal, uh, go ahead and get that out now because you are running out of time. Uh, and now that you're thinking about content, uh, it would be a great time to give some attention to your social profiles. Uh, earn you some more of that traffic, earn some more um, of that enhanced visibility. Uh, now that Twitter's showing up in Google search results, um, and just making sure that you have, that you're dominating the search results pages for your brand name, uh, taking up as much real estate as you possibly can. Uh, maybe it's been a while since you've been able to pay attention to those social profile pages. Get in there and refresh the about sections. Uh, check out any of the links that you have in there, making sure that they're still valid, uh, and updating any of the targeted keywords as necessary, as reflected in any of your recent keyword uh, research or strategy. And once you have your new content, this is where you get to spread the joy. Engage with your followers, put out holiday updates, uh, and all that good stuff. Um, another task you can take on are links. Everybody loves backlinks. Um, backlinks have always been a significant aspect of Google's ranking al algorithm, uh, so it's important to tend to these like you would a garden. Routine maintenance, weeding, planting, watering, and ultimately reaping the reward. But first, there are a few things to do here uh, around backlinks. Uh, you can scan your site for any broken internal links. Uh, it's an easy enough fix with CMS level edits. Just get in there, uh, repair any potential uh, links that may be, uh, may be outdated. Or if you have newer content that, that you can link to, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, you can use Screaming Frog again for this or the Google Search Console or any of a host of tools out there uh, to, to uncover any of those, uh, any broken internal links. And by shoring up those internal links, you can, uh, you can trust that your site is sending out the right signals to search engines um, while making sure that link juice is flowing throughout the site uh, as efficiently as possible. Then you can use tools like Majestic or SEMrush or Ahrefs uh, to discover any lost backlinks. Uh, this is simple enough to do. Uh, all it requires, uh, it requires no effort um, on the dev side of things. Um, but you can try to recover any lost links by sending out cheerful emails to fellow webmasters, um, seeing where 
and, and then potentially discovering you know, any, any source of, of new links um, with other sites. If, they, if you have new content, you can pitch your new content to them now. Uh, you can also use these tools to conduct a, a full review of your entire backlink profile. Taking a closer look at all the links pointing to your site coming in from other sites uh, with an eye to uh, the, the quality of those sites, um, making sure that we can weed out as many of the, uh, the spammy and nasty backlinks that are out there. Uh, the Moz Spam Analysis tool uh, in their Open Site Explorer is also a really quick and easy way to find um, and, and disavow any of those links. Um, they basically do all the, link, uh, all the work for you there. There, your links are fixed. That's better. And then, once that's done, uh, this is where you can dive into planning for uh, all of tomorrow's work um, and getting all of that planning done today. Um, you can use any of those previous tools uh, to conduct um, backlink research on your competitors. And this is where you can see who's linking to all of your competitors' content uh, and why and, and where from. Uh, this can be used for a lot of different ways, um, for things including uh, targeting maybe uh, blogs or other businesses uh, out there who should be linking to your content throughout this coming year, or if it's uh, seasonal, you can, or if it's seasonal, linking to your stuff again uh, in the in the next year. This kind of research goes beyond the basic keyword research uh, done for your own site, and it moves into things that you should be doing. For your content moving forward. Uh, you can get all kinds of ideas out of uh, what any of your competitors are doing. Next and lastly uh, on the list of things that you can do uh, during this code freeze time is training. Um, be intellectually curious. Uh, learn as much as you can uh, when you can and teach as much as you can when you can. Uh, those are two of the, uh, two of the basic tenets of, of work here at Portent. Uh, we want to continue learning every day and continue teaching when we can. Um, so take this opportunity, uh, learn something new for yourself. Uh, you can take a dive into international SEO. Uh, you can polish up any of your uh, local, local SEO knowledge. Uh, recertify yourself in analytics. Uh, learn to code. Learn a new coding language. Learn, you know, uh, get out there and you can even host a, an SEO 101 with you know, any of your other teams, uh, departments. Uh, get out there and engage more with uh, the content team since you work closely with them or with the development team since uh, you get to work with them a lot. But uh, yeah, so that's my holiday SEO, uh, a list of things that you guys can, can get out there and, and tackle now that uh, the site is solid and frozen in place and uh, if you're looking for things to do before uh, vacation starts up. Colin? Awesome. Thanks, Zach. That was fun, uh, first of all, and hopefully uh, valuable for folks who are looking for a few things to tackle maybe before the end of the year. Uh, we'll obviously open it up for questions. We'll give everyone a second to get those in. We've got a handful that have already come in. Um, but as you guys were thinking about that. Actually, why don't I start us off with one. Um, so Steve asks, do you think that most any CMS, uh, so uh, content management system, would let you edit metadata on, oh, this is a good question, on a product page without changing backend code, not just content pages? So I guess that's a question about what have you seen when you've gotten into CMSs on clients that you've worked with? Uh, yeah, pretty much always the uh, metadata should be um, should be editable in in pretty much every CMS. Um, it's more of a uh, a superficial paint job than it is a uh, like a restructuring of the foundation of the site. And a lot of times that that is uh, w with the back end being off limits, um, anything on the on the front end is usually pretty uh, pretty safe to to get in there and tinker with. That's great. Actually, I'm going to skip ahead a couple of questions. We've got a, a related one here. Uh, actually, a couple of related questions. Uh, so from Matt, is there anything general you can share about why CMS level or front end changes should get relaxed on during a code freeze to give ammo for conversations with IT? So I guess that's a question about uh, 
you know, whether a CMS truly sits separate from infrastructure and other stuff that's that's related to overall site performance, uh, and whether or not you're horsing with code that could decrease stable, uh, stability. Uh, yeah, again, um, be, because it's up there on the on the front end, uh, it, it should be definitely safe to, to get in there and work with. Uh, if not, uh, you might want to shop around and, and check for some CMS that's not too, uh, that's not as heavy duty and as, uh, has that big of an effect on uh, the back end. Yeah, and I'd temper that, of course, with, that sounds like a 2016 exercise <laughs> if it's uh, time to actually change your CMS. Um, but absolutely, and there, you know, uh, Douglas asks actually a perfect related question. Uh, and Douglas asks, do you have uh, indications or uh, educations on good CMS for a larger e-commerce site? And I think larger, small, that's, you know, the, the general guidance is to make sure that it is flexible enough to allow you to edit the metadata of a page um, without going through just a huge hassle. It's a great thing that we generally recommend. We've put out a couple of posts on that. Um, we've got some guides on the Portant blog for working with larger e-commerce, very popular e-commerce systems. We'll be doing more of those in 2016. Uh, so here's the next question from Katie. Uh, if you had to pick one on-page thing to fight for across a bunch of pages, uh, and she adds, because your IT department doesn't want to budge. Uh, so if you had to pick one of the things that we talked about today specifically for on-page, Zach, what, what one thing would that be that you'd want to go change? Um, well, hopefully the title tags are all up and, and doing well right now. Uh, for, for holiday, for particular, uh, in particular, uh, I would probably go for that structured data um, just because it's going to enhance that, that click-through weight um, for, for potentially all of your products across the board. Uh, so being able to, to add that uh, to the top level, I think, would, would serve uh, e-commerce sites particularly uh, really well throughout this season. I think that's great. I was actually about to argue that that's not technically on page because it doesn't have to do with the content, but absolutely that's an on page change because it's going to have to do with your home page and the information that you're using, uh, that, that you're using your home page to get out there. So that we'll, we'll give that one full marks. <laughs> All right. So let's take uh, let's take maybe one or two more questions. Uh, so Andy asks, you mentioned updating social profiles. Uh, does social chatter um, or social in general still impact search engine visibility as much as people were talking about a year or two or, or more ago? I wouldn't say it, uh, it can't hurt. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, if there is, uh, look at social as another form of an earned, uh, an earned click. Um, so if you're, if you're being talked about, if you're being shared, um, it's another way to get people towards a site. It's not necessarily going to be as much uh, of, a, of an organic ranking factor, um, but when people are looking for you uh, and finding you and clicking on your links and getting to your site and staying there, um, that has a positive effect uh, on all of the, the ranking algorithms. I think that's a great answer. And uh, if you want to do any follow-up reading, I'll actually provide a, uh, an endorsement for our friends over at Moz just down the street in Seattle. Uh, they're doing some really cool work. Uh, I've seen a lot of posts from uh, Cyrus and from Rand uh, talking about the, uh, the surge in visibility for uh, posts from Twitter and how that's actually impacting page one search results. Uh, things like actually pushing one full result off of page one in order to surface uh, an additional full tweet. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're interested in kind of how that's, that's playing out. Okay, uh, and then let's make this one our last question. Uh, sorry guys, we didn't get to your questions. If you want to holler at uh, us with, a, at, with any of those others as a follow-up, you can certainly tweet at us on at Portent. Uh, and Zach will uh, help me get back to folks on, uh, on those questions. Um, let's leave it with uh, one final uh, uh, tweak that you would recommend as your number one off-page thing to worry about. So you talked a lot about uh, pulling backlinks, making sure that you're taking advantage of non-linking mentions. If you had to say, what's the number one thing you would spend time on for the next six weeks until we get to the new year or so, give or take, um, what off-page exercise would you focus on the most, Zach? I think uh, definitely reaching out and repairing any of those lost backlinks um, is an excellent way to spend your time. Uh, they've, people have linked to your site before, 
um, giving them new content to maintain that relationship uh, and being able to maintain that uh, that organic type of of linking um, to to high quality content on your site, I think um, is during during this time in particular um, is, is great to to reach out and continuing to to foster those relationships between between other uh, between other sites. I I would totally agree with that. I think that's a great answer. And and you know the thing that I would point out that that's kind of underlying Zach's answer is that you know authority building is a total flywheel and if you wait until the moment where you most need it uh, you're definitely going to be waiting a while longer to actually get the fruits of that labor so while this might be the best season to have that authority uh, if you're working on it now when things get slow as far as other things you can work on for on-page seo uh, it'll definitely be coming back around to pay dividends for holiday 2016. so all right well, outstanding. Thank you for all the great questions, you guys. Uh, don't forget that if you have any more detailed or in-depth questions for Zach and the Portent SEO team, you can shoot a note to us via the Portent site, or you can holler at us on uh, Twitter at Portent. Uh, just a reminder, today's webinar, the presentation slides, and all of the links will be coming your way in a follow-up email. Uh, we hope you'll join us. Uh, we'll probably, we will uh, hold off on doing a webinar for December unless there is a, uh, an outcry uh, for, uh, for a webinar right around uh, Christmas time. Uh, and as always, if you don't want to wait to sign up for that next webinar, you'll be able to do that uh, via portent.com and we'll be shooting out an additional email uh, when the next topic is announced. Thank you guys and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing what all of you come back with as far as uh, great things to do during uh, the holidays. If you, uh, if you find something particularly inventive to do during a code freeze from an SEO angle and we'll see you guys next time.